yeah, so uh, thank you everybody for being here today. You probably haven't seen me around or at the desk. I was helping a little bit of organization here, but I promise I'm a software developer by the day. That's a, that's a side project I do. And so uh, the first thing that I want to do with you first, I want to share the agenda of what I want to be talking with you about today. So in case you're not interested, you're free to go and I'm not going to get offended. So what I want to to discuss with you is, first of all, what, what, what is going on with OpenAPI so far in terms of tools and usages we have on the market right now, and then what is going on with OpenAPI at runtime. You know, we're going to be exploring use cases, API gateway support, but more importantly, what I think we're missing in the life cycle, because I think there are a lot of misses, missed opportunities that we should pursue, and I'm going to be discussing some, some of the approaches we might want to take what we can do better in the space, and then uh, hopefully some live demo of what is going on, and you know, take away some questions, like what, what, uh, what we should be doing next. So again, uh, my name is Vincenzo Chianese. I am an Italian software developer, but I've been living away from the country for the last five years. Uh, Czech Republic first, and then now uh, Spain, which is where I'm living, and I am a software developer at Stoplight. Uh, anybody here in the audience knows Stoplight? Ever heard about it? Just one. You have a free month on the platform for that. Uh, but basically, Stoplight is um, we build tools for API developers. And so from having an idea to getting an API done, this is where Stoplight comes into the play, offering you the tools uh, to make it happen in terms of testing, documentation, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to be showing some of the things about it later. Um, I am also the maintainer of Express Gateway. Not sure if you uh, ever heard of it, but it's an open source API gateway written in JavaScript and running a node. It's an alternative to Kong and Tyke, these big monsters. I made a tiny micro gateway, which might be helpful for you guys. Um, and then I'm an OutZero ambassador. So OutZero is a company focused on security. They've been sponsoring my travel here. And uh, you know, in case you're interested in security in, in APIs, you can hit me up later. And last but not the least, I was awarded as a Google of a Developer Expert this December, and so it's this kind of elite of software developers uh, that you know are more a bit active in the space. So those are my references. In case you want to get in touch, you get the email, the website, the Twitter. The handle is going to be there for the whole time, and the GitHub account if you want to track me up. All right, let's straight jump to the content. So. Who here in the audience is a developer? I guess everybody. Nobody. Nice. Anyway, and, but I'm quite sure you're familiar with OpenAPI. Um, I'm assuming this. And so if, uh, you know, the, most of the time the conception you have about OpenAPI is that, you know, OpenAPI defines the standards which allows humans and computers to discover and understand the capabilities of, of a system. Or also what you find on the web is it's something to make interactive documentation, code generation, server, and test cases. And this is coming from the official OpenAPI repository. And this is, this is actually true. Because if we ever look to the current usages of OpenAPI, what you do is that you have this giant file with all the stuff around, and instead of dropping it to your customer, you use a service which is transforming this pile of crap into you know, something which is a little bit more useful for your customers so that they can jump on, they can, you know, they can see the table of content on your, of your API, understand a little bit the response and the request flow, um, you know, test the client live, uh, checking out if you're writing the things correctly, uh, search into the API. I mean, all those amenities you're offering, it's because you know, the open API file by itself, it's not human consumable, it's something for a machine. And then you use a service to enrich that. So this is the documentation part. Client generation and blah, blah, blah. All right. Then the second use case that you do with the open API, we actually saw with, uh, with the guys from API-matic, is that you, again, have this pile of crap, you give it to a service, API-matic, for example, and they transform that into something you, then, you can download and use on the spot. And why, why this is important? The first one is that, you know, you don't have to care about the base URL and authentication. You just provide an API key as an environment variable. You're good to go. Maybe it's using a key out, OAuth 2, whatever they want to use. You don't care. You have a API key. You're good to go. It's, it is masquerading that. Or also, URL mapping. So here you're doing clients.pets.create, and you don't know what is going on. Maybe it's calling an endpoint, call it API, 
uh, create whatever it is, you just don't care. It's fine. And if, and if the URL is changing, it's not your problem. You keep using the client, you're good to go. You also have parameters mapping. So if you have a look here, you don't know if this is a body parameter, it's a query parameter, how is that encoded, you just don't care. You pass an object, you're good to go. So uh, treat your SDK as a product. That's like one of the advices I want to give you. And the last thing, which I also think is important, the error handling. So, you know, if you, in this case, you don't know if the status code is a 404, 500, 200, whatever it is. You know if the operation worked correctly or not, period. You have a client and it's handled all for you. So SDK are definitely important because that's something that you might want to repeat. All right. You also have the automation of the test cases with OpenAPI. So, you know, you have your API as a code, you have your open API specification, and then, you know, you can check out if the API is behaving correctly according to the implementation. So you can see how, how it's going on with the schema, the file coverage, and moreover, you can also lint the API API. So you can make sure that the business rules are correctly respected, uh, best practices were using open API, the internal business rules, and, you know, it is just great and actually, you know, we at Stoplight have been open sourcing some of the infrastructure. And so there is Spectral, which is an open source API linting engine. And what it does, takes your open API document, is it, it is checking it against best practices and business rules. And it's telling you if it's going okay or not. Uh, check it out if you want. This is the link. Uh, you're going to find it in the slide. Maybe later, later I can show you the web page because it gives you an idea of what is going on. All right. But uh, if you, let's just make a very quick recap. We saw, you know, OpenAPI use it for documentation. OpenAPI use it for client generation, testing, and linting. And so all those phases are happening before the deploy. So you generate the documentation, that's fine. It's for the final customer. You make the test, hopefully, before the deployment. You do, you know, uh, linting of the API before the deployment, but after you deploy the API, more, most of the time the open API document is just forgotten. Nobody cares about it anymore. Like, mm -hmm, it's there. And I've been asking myself, uh, why, why we're not you know, closing the life cycle? What can we do with the open API document at runtime, so when the API has been deployed? And I've been starting to look a little bit around, what are the alternatives? And the only thing I've been able to find so far is that you, know, you make some API monitoring, usage statistics, and analysis and feedback collection. But this is what, not what I was looking for. I, um, I, I care about the monitoring, but not in this specific case. And so I kept going and going and check it out, what is going on. And again, the only valid use case I've been able to find on the market so far is that you, know, you on the left have the client, and on the on the left you have the client, and on the right you have the server, and so the, your user is making an API request, the client which you are providing to your customer is transforming this call into an HTTP request with the parameters and the error handler, blah, blah, blah. It's going to your server, your server is using the data you know, to give you statistic on the most used endpoints, uh, the most failing endpoints, or the most common scenarios. And you have a lot of value out of it, Absolutely, because you know, for example, let's say you start noticing that 99% of your user is hitting an API endpoint with an error code, like a 404. That means that maybe your documentation is not pointing good enough what is the API flow that you should be using. And so you may want to verify that and maybe write that section. So there is a lot of value here that you should absolutely monitor and track. But again, that was not what I was looking for. I was like, what about the DevOps? So I am a DevOps, I have this open API document, what can I do for it? What, 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 what can I do with this document? And I've been asking, you know, let's say for example I have an API and I wanna safely roll out a new API section. How do you do that? You can't. Or, you know, you wanna change, you wanna mark an API section as deprecated and so, you know, you wanna make some special logging when this is happening and that's a legit use case. Or also change Security requirement. So let's say you have a private API and then you want to open it to the public. Um, me as a DevOps, what can I do with OpenAPI? Right now, zero. 
or also changing in the validation rule. So you're changing a little bit the, the shape of the payload. Maybe a field is not required anymore. You know, you get the code into the CI, it's being deployed, but then me as a DevOps, what do I do? I'm like, uh, uh. So the, the, the general idea, I mean, there are a lot of use cases, is that nobody cares of DevOps with OpenAPI. And again, I'm not, an, I'm not a DevOps at all. I mean, I'm a software developer, but I was challenging and asking myself, why, why nobody cares? And so I've been starting to see, okay, uh, I'm quite sure somebody has been feeling this pain and, and, and you know, let's, let's check it out. And I've been finding that basically, if you want to do this kind of operation, like you want to make changes in all, some of those changes, like security, validation rules, or redirects, you have, um, if you're using an API gateway, you're actually on the good track for two main reasons. The first one is that you know, the, the, the surface of configuration of an API gateway, it's mostly limited. You know, you, you, it's, uh, it's not 300,000 options. It's, you know, it, it's nothing more than a reverse proxy and a couple of things on top of it. And so it's manageable. And more importantly, most of the time, what you're exposing from your API gateway matches perfectly your open API document because you know it's something you, that you go to the public and so the API gateway should be matching what is what is declared there and you know some API gateways are also declarative and so maybe the transition is easy yeah most of the solution can be declaratively configured and so I was like all right all right maybe the API gateway can do this job for me and then I said let's go out and check out the space let's see how they are performing if somebody cares about those topics and then I said, okay, let's go, let's check it out, AWS, because it's probably one of the most popular API gateways hosted in the world. Okay, then I went out, I checked out the configuration, and I figured that they do offer OpenAPI 2 support. They claim to have OpenAPI 3 support, but it's not really working good, not good enough yet. I think they're getting there, though. They have a set of proprietary extensions because they believe that OpenAPI 2 is not enough to, you know, um, uh, fulfill all the use cases of the API gateway, but what they don't have is an upload API. So fundamentally, you have no way to you know, grab your open API document and programmatically upgrade, upload it into their servers. So if you want to do that, you need to manually go on the website, click here, folder, browse, and double click, wait for the upload, and accept. So basically, you can't automate that. So me as a DevOps person, I'm, I'm always like, okay, um, I can't do anything with this. Let's go to the next one. I check it out, uh, Axway Ax API Gateway. This is a very, 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 very big company. And I said, okay, maybe those guys care a little bit more. Uh, they have Open API 2 support also. They don't have any custom extension. They have a public API configuration. And I was like, okay, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. But they don't have Open API upload support. So again, you can configure the API Gateway with a bunch of API call, but they do not support Open API naturally so you need to write your own integration layer to make that happen and so i was like yeah okay that's great but it's not good enough and then i said okay maybe google do you know rpg is a company that now has been acquired by google for more than half billion and they do gateway as primary job and so i said yeah those guys must be the guys supporting it and i was not even able to understand what open api support they have i believe it's 2.0 but they don't clearly say that they don't have any documented extension and they have a project upload api and so i said all right all right maybe this time is the good one uh, but what they do have um, basically they uh, have a, s a proprietary set of files and so again, it's a proprietary extension. They accept an open API to document though, but they're not doing anything with that. So they were like, give me your file and I'm gonna be storing on my server, but I'm not gonna be using it at all. And so, uh, you know, it's not helping, not helping at all. All right, so uh, premise solution, not satisfied. And then I said, okay, let's try to check out the open source community. Maybe they do care a little bit more. And you know, uh, the situation doesn't seem to be better. You know, um, as far as I know, Kong doesn't support this scenario, although they want to. Tyke, they have a sponsor, go ask them, but they do not right now. And I am the author of Express Gateway, and I do not do. But I wanted to solve that, though. 
and so, you know, just Express Gateway in a nutshell, basically it's, a, again, an open source API gateway written in JavaScript, it's running on Node, but, uh, you know, it, it, it's not a, a, a toy project. It, it has been actually used by several companies which are more or less big. I mean, the last one has been the Linux Foundation has been using Express Gateway. Just to give you an idea that this is not something that I do on the weekends and just to play around, it's something that is really used. Um, and so I said, okay, I am lucky enough to be working on such a project and maybe I can do something to solve the problem. And so, you know, talk is cheap, show me the code, as Linus Torvald say. And so I wanted to show you a couple of, uh, you know, examples, uh, you know, to, to show that it's true. And um, hopefully the Wi-Fi is not going to kill me, but uh, let's see how it goes. So the first thing I wanted to show you really quickly... Um, uh, let's go here. So uh, we probably saw... Uh, just before that, I was announcing kind of, um, what is it, um, Spectral, which is the open source linting engine, and I wanted to show you something a, a little bit more in action, so that you have an idea what is going on. But basically, you know, uh, you are making a change in your open API document, or even your code, and then an automation is checking out what is going on with your document and pointing out if something is going wrong or not. So if I go, I don't know, let's take this, uh, yeah, something a little bit older. I click here, uh, the Wi-Fi seems to be a little bit slow, but uh, not here. Check out another one. Come on, dude. Yeah, maybe this one is okay. Logs. Yeah, and so you can see that Spectral has been analyzing my open API document and point out directly in GitHub what is wrong with my open API document. So it's telling, you know, this part does not have the description and you might want to add it. Or, you know, this is wrong, this is cool, this is an error. And so, you know, it is, uh, it's an open source project we've been working on for a while, and this is the GitHub integration, which is checking out your code as you make commits. And so if this is wrong, your CI is not even triggering, so you can offload part of that. Anyway, check it out if you want to, or hit me up later. Uh, let's go back to, to the original demo. So the demo that I want to show you is that I have a very simple API, which is uh, here. If we go to the code, uh, it's JavaScript, but uh, nothing really complicated. Should be easy to, to catch on. Uh, uh, oh, it's here. And so what do we have here? We have a super simple API, which is, um, uh, has two endpoints, get all the pets, create a new pet, and get the pet food and create a new pet food. It's really super simple. It's doing nothing, just saving the things in an array and, uh, and giving it back. Because that's not the point of the presentation. Right? That's why it's so simple. And so I've been writing an open API specification which is exactly matching what is going on with this API. And you can see here, first of all, there is no validation here. You can see that I can send anything. The server is just going to say, OK, give me. And the same when you retrieve it. because. Uh, I've been offloading this part to the API gateway. And so if I go uh, here, which is my API gateway instance, you can see, I can probably close this, that I've been defining the schema of my payload at the gateway level. And so the gateway is checking that the payload is okay first, and then uh, it's passing the request. So my code, what my developers are writing, they don't care, just assume the payload is correct. Because me, as a DevOps person, uh, I'm making sure that the payload is correct. So this is a, you know, this is a good start of separating the things. And, um, and then I have my project here. You know, this is my open API specification, which is telling, you know, this is what, uh, uh, what my object will look like. So I have a name, which is a string, and it's required. I have a type, which is an enum, and it's required. And I have favorite food, which is also required. And so to, to show you that this thing is actually working, I have um, a script somewhere. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do that from here. Yeah, I have a 
bash script. And the first one, you know, it's creating a new path without favorite food, which is a required field. So this request should not pass. The second one is creating a correct payload, name, type, and favorite food. So this one should be working correctly. And the third one, you know, it is using um, something that it's not in the enum of the type of uh, pet, because it's cat and dog. And so if I try to do this, we shall see terminated, OK, another OK, because I'm retrieving all, all the pets, and then the last one, terminated. Let's see if that's working correctly. Now, terminated, OK, this is the list, terminated again. So, you know, the API gateway has been validating the things, and it is directly linked to the open API specification. That means, that, which is what I, what I was re really looking for, that if I go my platform and I remove the required field here because I'm not interested in it anymore, and I've saved the document, uh, so the CI is going to see, oh, right, this document has been changing, and so I'm going to be running the tests for you, and um, uh, actually, you know, yeah, so we, we, we save some time. But, you know, I'm going to be running the tests for you. And if they pass, I will speak with your open API gateway communicating these changes. And so if I go here and I refresh the page, I have a running job. All right, it's installing the things. It is testing my API against the implementation those are passing, and so then you go to the next step, which is the deployment phase, which is, okay, let's communicate to your open API gateway your changes, uh, all right? I'm checking it out, I'm running the deployment script and saying, all right, I saw this change in the schema, this is the new stuff, uh, execute it. And same goes for the, other, um, for the other payload. And so right now, if I run the same script, now I should get the first request should be passing because the field is not required anymore. The second one is passing as well. The third one is a cat. You get all the data. The last one will be failing anymore because, again, mouse is not in the enum. Let's see what, it goes, what happens. Pass it. Second one, pass it. Get all of them terminated. And so you can see that me as a dev person I get your changes from the document that you developers are using, and then the automation is closing the loop. It's not be anymore going on AWS and be like, click, click, and find it out what that is. It's, it is all automated. And this is just one of the use cases. I had another demo, but I think we don't have the time. But the, the idea was that also the security requirement can change. You know, open a, the API section for, you know, for Singapore event. I want everybody to be able to get some data, and then you close it back. And I, me as a DevOps person, I don't have to bother anybody. I'm just going to change the open API document. And given that you have this separation, me, you as a developer, you don't care. There is this piece of software, now the API gateway, which is checking it out for you. And so what are the takeaways here? Um, the first of all is that it, apparently, you know, from the analysis we did, the tooling in general hasn't been coding up with open API 3 yet. You know, most of them are all on OpenAPI 2. They do support extension, but blah, they, they just don't care it. Maybe because it's difficult to implement, or maybe OpenAPI 3 is not that spread yet. Or maybe OpenAPI 2 is good enough. Maybe it's OK. And also, that's probably what you notice, is that in general, OpenAPI is not a first-class citizen in, open, in API gateways. Nobody cares so far. And you try to think about why. Because with an, if you have a standard specification, it's way easier for you as a company to migrate to another solution. If you have a proprietary file extension, good luck. And so, you know, maybe, maybe we may want to make some questions to the guy on the sponsor village later. They, they just don't care about the support. It's not the right tool of the job. I mean, there are a lot of things, but I think that's uh, the real reason it's, uh, it's a dog. Or, and that's actually true, open API, open API documents alone are not enough to describe all the aspects of an API. For example, in Open API 2 and 3, you have no way to say, my API supports cores. There is no, no, no such a thing. And so, you know, you still have gaps that you need to fill out with proprietary extension. But if you're using proprietary extension, then you're back in the same thing again. And so maybe, maybe what we need to do, we need to, to think about 
an, ext an official extension of OpenAPI. So what can we do today? What are the rules to make it happen, what I just saw here? The first thing, you need to use an API gateway. You clearly need a boundary separation between your developers and you as a DevOps person, and uh, put as much as you can on it, like security, rate meeting, payload validation, because this stuff can be reused in all the services you have, and you can say to your developers, don't care about validation, don't care about security, don't care about anything, I'll take care of it for you, and you're just good to go. And absolutely important, you don't need to have microservices to use an API gateway. API gateway is a thing you can use in any case, and most of the time it actually makes sense. You don't have to use it by default, but you know, if you want to um, take advantage of these opportunities, that's the first step you should do. So API gateways equal microservices, that is not true. Just put it, put it and it's okay. And make sure it exposes exactly what is declared in the open API specification file because so that the, the translation is gonna be way, way easier. Prefer a solution that is declarative because you know, there are API gateways that can, can be configured declara in a declarative way you know, with, a, with a single file telling you what to do or there are gateways that can be only uh, configured with a bunch of API calls, which is an imperative way, and it's not helping you in the job. Kong, uh, that's by API calls, it's because it's gonna be way easier to write automation scripts. Refrain from using custom extension, as I just said, because it will complicate the things when OpenAPI maybe will catch up, and then you will have to use translation and stuff. Uh, that's all I have. Um, and uh, what I mostly, impo if you are having the same issues I'm having with this lack of open API runtime, I encourage you to write me because I, I would like to know your story and understand if I'm going to the right track or maybe I'm completely wrong. Uh, thank you for your time. Yeah, we have time for one or two questions from the audience. Right, who use uh, API gateways? Yeah, some people there. Who use micro gateways? You know, like some, some, because some vendors like try to. Yeah, they're like a uh, micro gateway? Yeah, so this is why I was asking that. Right? Yeah. What do you think about the, m this new era of doing micro gateways, right? Is it uh, bullshit or is it like real? Uh, so EG is actually kind of a micro gateway because uh, the, the footprint is small, it's mostly designed for, um, what is that, for, uh, for Raspberry Pis and all those kind of stuff. So I think it's a thing. And you know, uh, so far most of the people have been putting the API gateway in front of the whole infrastructure and that becomes kind of a pain for a DevOps to manage it. So in a, in a, with a micro gateway instead you can put a gateway instance for each service and make unique rules and not concentrate all the things together. So I think it's a pattern that actually makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, because someone say that if you begin to have a big infrastructure and you make one big API gateway in front of everything, then you're just reinventing ESB. Do you agree with that? Uh, kind of. Uh, it, it really depends. But in general, yes. If you're having 300,000 service with a single API gateway, then you have a huge configuration file which takes three hours just to understand what is going on. You may want to change the, the pattern you have, yeah. We have time for one question still. Everything is okay? Yeah, awesome, yeah, thank, nice. you. thank you. Thank you, Vicente, thank you very much.